Everybody, it's Tyler here at Kettering One, checking in with 5460 Strike Zone, world finalist last year and a phenomenal machine last year. Coming this year, this is one of the cleanest robots I have seen here so far. Just the overall elegance and packaging that Strike Zone brings every single year is so great. We'll be covering a full run through, uh, coming in from their under bumper intake, a great indexer, uh, trap scoring, climber. Let's learn more about Strike Zone and this year's game crescendo coming up here on Behind the Bumpers. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash first to learn more and apply. Support funds content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and fund members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the join button in any YouTube video to pledge your support. Charlie, let's start talking about your elevator and your climber mechanism. As we mentioned, you know, everything that you have, your packaging is just so uh, beautiful on this robot. So talk to me more about some of those features, uh, how you came up with them, and just let's showcase how they work. So at the beginning of the season, we knew we wanted to be able to uh, climb and prioritize the trap because we knew that's how we were gonna get the climbing ranking point and then get four ranking points and be able to compete at a very high level. So for the climber here, we actually have a sprocket drive, which it runs down here. And then this rubs through, this runs through all the holes up and down the tubing, which allows us to move our carriage, allows us to move our carriage upwards. And then we're able to score on the trap. So, and then what we do for climb is we, this limelight will detect the April tag on the stage and it'll, we have to line it up and then we, it takes over and lines itself up. So these, so these hooks will go down onto the hooks and then these climbing reaction wheels here on, on our carriage will scale the stage wall. So as these hooks go down, these wheels climb the stage wall and we're able to score in the amp. So these will move down, this will go up. When you were uh, analyzing the Crescendo game, talk to me about kind of the hierarchy of importance in regards to scoring. You have the, the speaker, the amp, the trap, the climbing, all that stuff like that. Was there kind of a hierarchy on what you want to do or were you looking at just really accomplishing everything? Yeah, so every year at the beginning of the season, we all read the rule book and then we create a wants, needs, and maybes list. So for our needs, we definitely wanted to score in the tramp trap and also climb just to get those ranking points. And then we also wanted to prioritize a quick, robust, and just efficient shooter and amp system. So this is also our amp system here. On, the, on your elevator itself, uh, do you have multiple positions or is it just kind of a primary position for the amp? We just have, um, the elevator will move, just move up and down. So at the very bottom, this is the home position. And then at the very top, like it just was, it will, that is, allows us to score into the amp and also to the trap by tracking the April tags. Last thing I want to ask you is uh, scoring on the amp, you're, you're bringing something up really quick, but I noticed your robot zero wobble to it or anything like that. Uh, how did you approach uh, your CG to make sure, you know, you can essentially score on the fly or as quickly as possible on the amp? Well, we make sure that all of our tubing at the very bottom is uh, eighth inch uh, aluminum. So that adds some weight. And then our battery is also underneath our robot, which is where we have to load it in from and take it out of. So that adds a very low center of gravity as that's what we wanted to keep it as. So we can move quick, but we're heavy on the bottom and not on the top. So we shouldn't be able to tip, which we haven't yet. So we're good. Cameron, let's talk about the uh, under the bumper uh, intake and uh, talk about your shooter position. I, I watched your last match. Just a lot of versatility that your team really does bring uh, from a shooting standpoint. So let's talk about that note journey coming through. Yeah, so um, starting off with our intake here, um, it's a pretty standard setup for this game. Um, we just have four rollers, in, um, or five rollers in total, sorry. Um, we use two inch compliant wheels on the bottom um, to help get a little bit um, more torque on the each note as we bring it in. And then everything else is just um, 1.125 inch rollers with silicone tubing stretched over. Um, and down in here, we added some um, um, Vex poly belt to help Vex bring the note between these two rollers. Um, that just helped keep it so we didn't have to add another motor into the system and um, overall helped to keep it a little bit more simple. 
I noticed on the uh, intake that the way your compliant wheels are on the bottom, it's only covering about like half or two thirds of it. Can you talk yeah. a little bit more about that? Yeah, so that has to do with actually the way we vector it. So all of our vectoring is done completely passively with these um, uh, polypropylene guides. And so we can't, we don't want to have any grip towards these outsides because then we'll be fighting our polypropylene guides as we feed in. All right, so um, yeah, can we take a note? So in a match, we like to keep our notes seated here. Um, it helps keep us ready to shoot. Um, and then, yeah, so moving up to our shooter here, um, it's a pretty simple setup again. Um, it's just two and a half inch um, um, poly wheels that um, help shoot it in. We actually drive it with two Krakens down here. We drive each side independently, and that's to help us put more spin on the note. So, depending on the angle that we're coming in from, we can put more or less spin on um, to um, get it into the hub. Talking about your uh, your match strategy, the last match I saw, you were uh, essentially uh, intaking notes uh, from the source and essentially shooting them the other side of the field to pick them back up later. Talk to me more about that. Yeah, so um, that came in a lot about um, trying to optimize that four no amplification period that you get. Um, so we wanted to basically be able to score all four of those notes as fast as we can. And the way we identified that is to get um, about six, four to six notes on the other side of the field and um, be able to score two in the amp and then turn around and score four in the um, speaker really fast. So hopefully um, maximize that as much as possible. Natalie, start wrap up on this robot. Talk about your uh, button board uh, that you have and then uh, as well on your robot, I'll be going through some of the cool sensors for it, but let's hop into the button board first and take a look at that. Okay, so the button board over here. So we usually do a custom button board every single season. This is our one for this season. Inside the button board is actually a custom PCB I made in my internship through Cy Cypress Integrated Solutions. So inside the this custom PCB, we have about 32 digital ports for buttons, about eight analog ports, about 16 low voltage ports for lighting up LEDs on here, and then about 12, or sorry, about four 12 voltage ports, so which would light up like bigger LEDs. So this year we went with like a smaller button board just for this game. Here we have all of our overrides. We have our Auton selectors, which is actually in binary. So we would select these in like a binary sequence to select our Autons. These are our shooter switches, our red and blue selector, and then our gyro reset. And these are all of our backup shots, as well as our spit, home, and our climbing switches over here. Up here are some of our um, LEDs, which will light up if we have any issues with the robot or any warnings that are happening during the match. What are some of the uh, issues or warnings that might come up? So some of the issues or warnings might be like um, limelight's not tracking or beam brake sensor specifically not working, or anything like sensor related on the robot that for some reason isn't tracking that could affect our match play. And uh, walk me through some of the sensors on your robot and uh, kind of the locations where those are. So first, um, I can mention that the beam brake sensors that are right here, so the beam brake sensors will sense if there's a note in the robot and will also not allow us to intake if we sense that there is a note in the robot. And if there, it senses that there isn't a note in the robot, it won't let us do any of our functions until there is a note in the robot. And then if you want to come over here, we have our buttons that we have on the robot for taking the robot on and off the field and for testing. These enable our brake modes for shooter, elevator, and climber. So we use uh, mainly the climber one when we're trying to take the robot off the stage. And so we'll enable that so that way we can take the robot off. We also have our limelights up here. So our limelights do like the basic limelight things. It tracks like the April tags, allows us to line up and shoot, and helps us with our autonomous sequences. We also have our LEDs up here. So our LEDs will glow purple when we're localized on the field and will slowly dim as we need to become relocalized again. And then, so if you wanna come over to the Krakens over here. So on our Kraken boards, we actually have like a custom PCB in here to help feed the can wires out this way for just cleaner wiring. I also made this at my internship with Cypress. So that way we can just run the can wires this way. And we actually have a custom PCB that has a terminating resistor on it with just um, some can ports that we can plug in in the, like the same connectors that we use for our robot, just so it makes it easier. What's been your uh, overall satisfaction with the Krakens uh, so far this year? Um, we really like the Krakens. It, it honestly, we think they work a lot better than like the Falcons do. They speed up really nicely and they just do what we want them to do. Well, 5460 Strike Zone, thank you so much uh, for taking the time. Phenomenal robot once again. We can't wait to see how you do here at Kettering 1. And, of course, show up the rest of the competition season. Good luck the rest of the way. 
This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineered their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to Kettering.edu first to learn more and apply.